Hi guys, it's Annette from Annette's Astrology Corner and I am going to put together a short video about this beautiful solar eclipse that is going to be happening in Cancer in a beautiful harmonious um, water trine that is just stunning because the new moon um, solar eclipse is involved in this glorious water trine. And as you all know, um, we've been involved in this trying for some time and it has felt very emotionally overwhelming. Like this has been a time where our, we've become very aligned with how we emotionally feel. We've been centering our lives around the way that we feel, whether we want to or not, because we didn't get much of a choice. Like it, we weren't in control of the situation. Our emotions were... Our, the unconscious realms of our emotions, you know, the depths of us, where we emotionally suppress things. That's what was dredged up for a while here. And as we've been facing those depths, we've also been dredging up some deep emotional desires about our future and what we deserve and what we want and what we hope for because settling emotionally is a slow, drawn out death that basically depletes the, um, the human experience. Any time that we disengage emotionally and we start to become just very earthbound, just, just very uh, materialistic, just very tangible, then we start to lose track of why the human experience, why we were our souls were put into a human body. You know, why wasn't it put into something else if that's all we wanted? So we were, we were supposed to emotionally accomplish something, connect. We were supposed to achieve something to evolve in some way emotionally. And for this society, for this day and age, for this time, it's such an emotionally depleted society it's so external it's the internal realms are being submerged deeper and deeper into the depths of even we don't even see them we don't even know they exist inside us let alone to connect to them with somebody else or with our creative side to to drudge up that emotional connection to um, creativity, to hopes, to dreams, to wants, to love, to karma, to all the beautiful things that make life worth living. This is what this beautiful trine has been deciphering for everybody. And the ego has been a very big burden for many because the ego drives us to want things. But I think on a deeply internal level, some of us have had to um, choose between what we tangibly want and what will emotionally fill us, fulfill us. And this society is geared to make us believe that being successful in the tangible realm is being successful. It's successfully achieving your goals. Um, and, and, it's, and it's what society recognizes as, you know, um, success. But as we are going through this deeply emotional time, at a sensitive time, at a time when Uranus is in Taurus and all of our senses are igniting, and telling us intuitively that there's more to life than what we've been living and the way we've been doing it. And as we're, as our intuition is um, working on a very subconscious level, the things that keep getting dredged up in everybody's lives is the past. What in the first place diminished our emotional experience, our emotional fulfillment on this planet? Like what took it away from us? Where is our ingrained patterns that tell us that emotionally we're not deserving, that we're not enough? Why do we have to settle for that? Oh, sorry, my dog was crying. Hey, Brianna, will you get him? He's dying to be near you because he knows something.
So I think what is so stunning about this time is, and I want to show you the cards I drew. Because as you can see, the emperor, the ego, the way we're centering ourselves, the what, what we're trying to find power in. And on the opposite side of that is passion, right? What really adds that Scorpio passion to our lives, that desire to make life worth living, is right in the middle of that energy, and it's the Page of Swords. It's, there is a sense, to me, as we're building our value, or we're, we're figuring out what we value. We're trying to let people know that this is what we have to offer. This is what we're worth. And we're not going to settle. And we're trying to get people to understand and to align with our concepts. It's very hard because we're having to convince people. And that's really disheartening when you've got a Mars and Aquarius retrograde. It's very disheartening when you are so certain and so sure of the direction that you want your future to go and who you want in your future and the, the vision that you see for your lovely future, right? And, and this is in its most hopeful optimum state, right? At some point, what's frustrating is you're in charge of this. You know, you've released Something. you've been letting it go for a while and it's been a really long journey and it's been an emotional one as well and I really think that the, what's really sad about this experience is is that people still define you by your past there's still things in your past where people see you in your diminished self your lost self, your self that has ended. And because they define you as that, it's, you're having to work twice as harder to rebuild, to restore your life and start to pull it out of where it was. That, that place where it was emotionally unfulfilling, that place where you were working out of poor coping methods, that place where emotionally, um, I think you were a little lost. Your soul, you weren't directional in your emotional states because you were in the state of like hyper reactivity and there wasn't time to feel anything. There, that was postponed, that was suppressed, that was pushed down because you had to react to everything in your environment. You had to react to, to um, the, the massive changes that were coming at you right and left. And, and it doesn't give you time to feel and connect and to um, develop your intuition and develop that, that connection to the people in your inner circles, the people in your life. One of the things that's really strong in this particular new moon, guys, is where you call home. You know, how secure is your home life? Your, is your, I mean, are you safe? Do you feel like this is a great place to start? You know, is this, is there just a nice area in your life that you consider super stable and comfortable? And does that give you the, the sure footing to, to start to rebuild? That place in your life where you, you lacked emotional fulfillment, you, but you need a sure footing. You can't. Everything can't be like quicksand in your life. There has to be a place that's solid. And wherever that place that's solid, that's where you can root yourself. That's where you can start to regrow. That's where you can start to plant these seeds that generate longevity. Because see, the beautiful, gentle opposition, and I love oppositions, they're better than squares to me or quincunxes. Um, the gentle opposition to this new moon, this beautiful water train, is Pluto. So we need an opposition. It can't be all bells and whistles and fairy dust. 
like we need opposition to keep us on the ground to keep us our thoughts firm and steady to, and, and Pluto and Capricorn in retrograde is about recalling past failures so that whatever is coming back so it, it's a very confusing time because there are past things that are re-emerging but what they're they're re-emerging for a specific reason they're not about always getting right back on that horse and trying it again it's what are you learning about yourself from those past things coming back there's a lesson in there and it's it's about not doing it again it's about being strong enough to say no and to value yourself enough and to want to um, change your life and to help ground you and balance you and give yourself some emotional security in the fact that you know that you can start to that you can trust yourself in making emotional decisions see the scariest thing in the world is when we make emotional decisions because 90 percent of the time when we make emotional decisions they are wrong or they are short-lived or they are as fleeting as love can be and so when when we get emotionally allured back into our past into a comfort zone into something that could that that is familiar Sometime there's where what we're comfortable with is the dysfunction. It's predictable. We understand it. We understand the um, the dynamic of it, and so there's a comfort in that. Even though it's not emotionally good for you, it's it's dysfunctional. This solar eclipse is about bringing in new energy where you're not making the same mistakes that you've made in the past. It's about creating a new way of looking at security on an emotional level. This trine is out there to test you because it's really easy for your emotions to lead you astray right now. I mean, it's a trine is just like an emo, it's like a, it's like the wind. It's like if you're in a boat and you don't have a motor and you're just at sea, you're going with the tide of the sea. So that's kind of what a trine is, a water trine is. But I'm loving that the fact that this water trine in, in particular is being grounded by earth energy. And with, op with Pluto in opposition of it, it's all about an end of something that is past related. Uh, um, something that I don't think is emotionally in your best interest to do again. I think of these two like really strong, dominant, um, masculine energies in this um, reading. And I look at the beautiful Three of Pentacles and I look at the um, Page of Swords and I look at somebody who's really trying to add value to their life. You know, do things in a new way, holding back a little to try to see if there's some humility in those cards. In the middle of all this energy, in between ego and in between passion, there's humility. And the only way that we get that humility in life is because we we are emotionally engaged in this scenario. And the, the, the trine is, sorry, I got it, like, oh, there, I had gravel under my feet. The trine is trying to ask you what relationships around you really ground you. That don't add emotional instability, that don't add emotional upheaval, that aren't power trips, that aren't um, that aren't manipulating you by your heart. They're, they're actually just completely um, energetic exchanges of um, 
where it's in balance, where you get as much as you get. That's what, that's what this is all about. Because in order for a Cancer energy to feel safe enough to give you a blessing, it, to give you itself, to give you its emotional um, sacrifice, and to open itself up to be vulnerable, it has to be completely safe. Completely safe. It can't be, and what from the past makes you feel completely safe? I mean, if it's in the past, there had to be a reason why it, you had let go of it. And if so, why is it coming back? What is it tempting you to do? I mean, really take a look at that. Because that area is where you are going to receive the biggest blessing of all. That is where the power is. That is where what's being restored in your life is that area in your life that at some point emotionally became depleted, emotionally became non-fulfilling and unstable, and you lost hope in that, that area. But you don't understand if you're doing the work and you're passing this test and you're saying no and you're letting it go and you're forgiving it and you're wishing it well and you're, you're just, you recognize it on a humble level and your humility is allowing you to let it go and to let it change you in a positive way, then that's when you are vulnerable enough to receive this freaking stunning, absolutely delicious energy that's coming in. I mean, if you could just feel what I feel, it's just white light, it's so pure. It's not tainted anymore, but it's new. And that's the key word. It's, it's I wish I could just help. I wish you could feel it. Because if you could feel what I feel right now, you would be so humble and so thankful that you're in this spot in your life. That you got blessed to be put here in pain, in suffering, in loss, in humility. You're so blessed because Life's been worse. It's been horrible. It's been painful. A lot of loss. A lot of dreams that were ideal at the time just seemed so unrealistic and, and just foolhardy. And But now you're grounding all of that. And you're going to be holding on and investing in things that are grounded. That have a future that can manifest something in the long run. And that's why we have a gentle opposition with this gorgeous um, new moon. Solar eclipse, it's even, it's even, what I love about this solar eclipse is that it's going, the, the energy is gonna be something that comes at you kind of in a, sideways manner. I mean, if you look at a cancer energy, it doesn't hit you hard. It's subtle. And a lot of people really need this dramatic show to really acknowledge that change is good. And I'm telling you right now that that's not where this energy is at. We don't need a dramatic show. We'll get that at the, on the 27th with the lunar eclipse. That thing? Great, great. Beautiful, but cray cray. Anytime you get Aquarius energy, anytime you get a lunar eclipse, the this lunar eclipse is going to be a blood moon, and it's going to be the longest lunar eclipse in the 21st century. It is going to be what an hour and 43 minutes or something like that. It's going to be in Aquarius, and it's going to be conjunct with Mars. And it is going, and the sun is going to be, I think, conjunct with the North Node in Leo. So you're come, you're going to get your show. But before that, you're going to have some peace. There's going to be a release. 
there's gonna be a time where you just are so freaking thankful that life gave us this. To me, this is where inspiration is really, you're gonna feel very, very inspired. If you, I, I hope you meditate. I hope you are not a person that's craving the forward energy of the emperor or the forward energy of the wands. You know, just that kind of intense, cocky, um, holier than thou, that regal kind of feeling where the only thing that, the only way that you can understand how blessed you are is because your ego is completely fed and because you're being recognized in the ways by whom you want and in the ways you want. This isn't about that. This is an internal process. That is why in the middle of the Emperor and the Wands is the Page of Swords and the outcome is the Three of Pentacles. Because this is about being humble enough. Even though you have blessings, even though things are going your way, even though your ego is finally starting to see some success for many of you, and maybe something very heart-based is starting to manifest in your life and you're starting to see some hope on the horizon, as long as you're not thinking that you're deserving and that you, um, it's kind of like that where your ego thinks that because you're you, you just should, you should get it. It's like, no, the reason you got this is because you made a lot of emotional sacrifices to get where you are right now. And you've suffered a really long time and even though there are beautiful things coming in the future and you can feel them, there's something more, something deep, something that's um, emotional that you, money can't buy. And the only way that you're going to touch that, you're going to reach down into that depth. The only, the only way that you're going to um, possibly receive that gift is when you're humble enough to dive into the emotional realms, not into this material physical realm. I mean, sure, there's, there's many, many gifts right now in the physical realm that is making many, many people feel like they're getting life back on track. But there is a lot of people who are being woke up intuitively, emotionally, that are connected to spirit in a way that those people are going to get the, the, the special gifts of this, new, this um, beautiful new moon in Cancer. Because as we all know, <laughs> You could have all the money in the world, but if you're not emotionally safe, if you're not loved, if you're not, if you don't have any emotional security, nothing mentally stabilizes you. Because the mind is the, is the tricky part. That's the, the page of swords. It's the mind. It's like we can, we can give our ego all it desires materialistically. But like, when it comes to the emotional realms, that's where everybody really needs to be safest and secure. And that's where we all need to be fed the most. We're so depleted and starving in that area. And I just want you guys to feel that and have that. I feel like there is a release from something that's been emotionally, you've been stuck in an ingrained pattern that emotionally told you that you weren't good enough to have it or that you don't deserve it or time and time again you failed in this particular area. And I feel like you've just succumbed on an emotional level to it and you just said, I maybe I don't deserve that, you know? Maybe I've gotta give that up. I don't think that's what the universe is telling us right now. I'm gonna let this person walk by really quick.
about that. Oh no, I, I'm just in awe and I'm stunned by the beauty of this new moon. And when I felt it, I, I needed to talk to you guys about it. As busy as I am and as hard as it is to fit this into my schedule, I, I also feel like if you guys are connecting emotionally right now to yourself and intuitively to yourself, this water train that I'm talking about, like if you're, what you're really centering yourself around is your emotional fulfillment. And, it, and it's, it's okay to like materialistically want things, but I'm just talking about this particular thing. I can't tell you how if you could lock onto this and center your life on it and center your hopes, your dreams, your wants on it, everything else is gonna just fall like dominoes into place because if you, we can get this one thing solved for you, it's just, that's the root. Where you can, that's how you're, if you can plant your seed into something that is nice and firm and solid, then there's no, you can conquer anything, right? You can achieve anything. You can, any goal you set you can have because you have the basics down. I just believe right now that this, what this really, really, really says to me is that I think on what you want to attract emotionally and that can mentally stabilize you is possible in energy like this. It's possible to come out of the next six months. We've got some work to do. I've got a little bit of clearing to do with that full moon, but even that full moon is going to have some very interesting dynamics to talk about. <laughs> we're, you know what, we're, we're ending things um, that are very heart-based for a very long time. Were we emotionally connected to these things, these dreams, these hopes, these wants? They, we were very passionate about them. We have been trying to end all of this and let go of this life lesson. And it started last summer. I mean, it's, it's been ongoing, but the big, big energy, the energy that was like the guillotine was the big solar eclipse that happened last year. And now we're, now we're ending all of that energy, you know? And it's to release you and so you can get on with the next phase of your life, onto the next chapters. Move past it, move on and, and, and be happy and emotionally fulfilled and, and your future to become very energized with hope. Um, it's, it's hard because with Mars being in Aquarius and it's in retrograde, there's this feeling like it's not happening fast enough. But for the people that are really connected to this energy in the right way, the people that are humble, the people that are trying to rebuild, um, the change is happening plenty fast. It's, 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 there's a sense of moving away from things in the past and letting them go, and that's been really hard. At the same time, we're really being pushed forward. And emotionally, that can get a little confusing because we're like, oh, we're kind of still stuck in the past but we're supposed to be moving forward. And the past, we've only known the past. The past is where our comfort zone was, no matter how dysfunctional or functional it was. It's an area that there was some, where we developed an unhealthy connection with um, stability. If it's in your past, it wasn't stable. If it's in your past, it, it, that is an area in your life that was a karmic lesson, a karmic relationship. Um, it doesn't mean that things can't be re-energized and reignited from the past. I think that this is a beautiful energy for this. Um, I just think the challenge is, is people are going to try to jump into it too fast. Not keeping their eyes open, their heart open, their intuition open. You know, the things that we're asked to be connected to right now on, intuitive, on an intuitive level 
um, because we're having this big water trend, intuitively, it, I mean, if you're just caught up in your ego and wanting to have something that you missed out on, then that's where you're gonna go wrong. If you are caught up in where your intuition is leading you, and don't avoid that area. Like we all kind of dance around and try to like avoid the area that uh, where we know our intuition is telling us no. It's like, oh, well, we're not gonna get what we want. So our ego tells us that we need that. But like your intuition is, is warning you. And so what we're trying to do, what the universe is trying to do is to make us incredibly brilliant and strong in our intuition. It's, it's teaching us how to trust it. It's teaching us how to listen to it. It's teaching us how to emotionally bond with it so that we don't get hurt anymore. We don't make wrong decisions. We can start to learn to trust ourselves again and we can start to release all of the areas in our life where at one point we, we lost control and we, we lost power in. And it's trying to restore that and the way that it's going to do that is through your intuition, your connection to yourself, your, how you trust yourself, how you empower yourself, where your power lies within you in the midst of challenge, in the midst of heartbreak, in the midst of despair, in the midst of suffering. Like how do you survive all of that? And how do you steer yourself out of the dark? How do you overcome stuff? How do you rise above it? I mean, that's all what this has been about. It's all been your heart. It's all been your intuition. It's all been your focus on something better. It's all, be it's, it's all about becoming realistic about what you attach hope to. It's all about um, making changes that are positive and learning to let go of things um, and things that are negative. As transformative as this time has been and it's, it has been in the midst of pain, all of that has been to teach us to be what we are right now, which is survivors. All of us are survivors. And we're learning now all of the skills of survival. So that's that whole Chiron and Aries gonna go retrograde, right? That's survival skills. You know, if you're put on an island and you don't have anything, you learn how to survive on the island without anything and you, you look for all the tools that are around you to survive what you're going through. And you just have a very heightened sensitivity to surviving right now. But now it's time to like let go of all of what we're surviving because we've survived it. And now it's time to rebuild after we've survived it. Now, now we're not surviving anymore, we're survivors. Anyhow, <laughs> such a gorgeous energy. Are you just, is this spot ridiculous? Like, am I just not the luckiest human being on the planet to sit here and share this with you? So thankful for all of you guys. I'm thankful for my life. I'm thankful for my blessings. I'm humble. I am nowhere what I used to be. I wouldn't change anything that happened to me if this is the way that I get to be right now. This person, this humble, thankful human being in life. Like I'm, I can't tell you how grateful my life is right now for just any blessing. And God has been so good to me and I'm just very, very thankful. And I'm thankful for all of you. Anyhow, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.